D on this. Um, first, looking at the uh, Mapbox interface. Um, so it's fairly uh, intuitive. I mean, what you have is like your projects page, um, your styles, which will uh, lead you to um, Mapbox Studio, which unfortunately isn't quite working right now. But um, for the projects, um, you can actually get started in here looking at your information. So um, it's quite nice. Uh, within this, you have you know your style, which uh, you can easily change uh, your base map layer, and also um, <clears throat> use um, different base layers. For example, if I want to use terrain or uh, satellite, um, the only limitation for this is um, you know you have to have a paid account to use um, satellite or terrain. But if you're looking to uh, quickly visualize. Um, some information. You can go under data and uh, you can already import a um, CSV uh, just to get a sense of how it looks within the map. And so you guys already know how to um, export a uh, CSV. So I just made a quick one uh, with some SOFON listing locations. And it should already, yep. It should have already imported in here. So this gives you a sense of you know where it exists on the map. And you can actually uh, go through and embed this information already. But you know, the idea of this is that we make our own custom maps that illustrate, you know, as a visualization of our thesis, um, as well as you know, has a fair amount of interactivity on the web. So um, from here, um, uh, Mapbox has created a uh, standalone program called uh, TileMill, um, which is extremely useful because uh, going beyond its capabilities in um, uh, Mapbox, where you can just sort of import information and you know do some basic styling as far as uh, colors and information goes, um, TileMill is useful because you can actually uh, get more in depth and uh, edit all this information using. Um, uh, what's called Cardo CSS, which it stands for uh, Context Style Sheets. So um, you guys should already know um, a little bit about HTML from web scraping. CSS uh, is kind of in part of that. Uh, this is what it looks like right here. So within your uh, map box, I mean the tile mill um, uh, program, the first thing I'll take it to is your um, project page. And the nice thing about it is that they already have a bunch of default uh, projects in here that you can sort of look at and get a sense of how this uh, works. So um, CSS is basically uh, a formatting language for how things uh, look on the web. So HTML defines the content, CSS defines the look, and JavaScript is uh, basically for functionality, which we'll get into um, later on. So. Um, for the tutorial, I'm basically going to show you how to import shapefiles, uh, import and stylize point data, vector data, uh, import geotiffs, as well as create custom point markers. So um, as a point of reference before we get into all this, um, I just want to say, you know, it's a little intimidating that, you know, we're going to go into another language, but um, Talmill and Cardo CSS is well documented, and they have, um, uh, you know, a lot of, um, uh, a helper toggle right here to get some of the uh, information how to format some of this language, which we'll get into later. And then also on the web, they have you know dozens of websites that can get you into this. But before we start creating um, our new projects, uh, the first thing we have to do is to go into uh, QJS and get our file set up for um, review. So you guys should have seen this earlier. Uh, this is taken from one of um, uh, Daniil's um, uh, tutorials. Uh, and what we want to do uh, for today is basically take this map and try to recreate it um, in tile mill. And uh, I did a quick sort of a interpolation on here just to demonstrate how to bring that in too. So the first thing that you want to make sure is that everything is uh, saved out as uh, WGS84. So uh, you all should know how to do this. You know, browse, save as um, your demo files and um, uh, set the CRS so that can easily be imported into tile mill. Um, the next thing we have to deal with is the raster layer, which is a little bit um, tricky because in tile mill, um, unfortunately, it doesn't allow you uh, to have much control over the look 
of your uh, raster data. So any uh, you know, um, stylizing or visualization you want to do should be done first in QGIS and like you could also further edit in Photoshop if you, uh, you know, want to get uh, really fancy with it. But uh, when you have um, a uh, raster data, it typically saves out, you guys have all seen it before, the black and white and then you stylize it uh, within properties and give it some definition to uh, visualize the the data. So uh, in order to actually uh, export this, what you have to do is click it, uh, save as, and save it as a rendered image as a GeoTIFF. Uh, this is the only format that um, Talmill will take uh, raster data as. So uh, simple, you know, save as, uh, put it in, you know, whatever folder you want to. Um, make sure that the CRS is once again at WGS84 and uh, click um, map view extents and once you hit OK, which I've already done, uh, it's uh, going to be ready to bring into tile mill. So once you have everything set to WGS84 uh, and uh, the images rastered out, you should pretty much be ready to go. Oh, sorry, one last thing. Um, for um, any numerical information that you want to visualize, it's important that um, for example, with these um, uh, these vector lines and these uh, weighable points, uh, we're going to want to utilize that data within the visualization to make uh, you know weighted bubbles or um, basically give definition to what it's representing. So um, in QGIS right now, uh, this information is all saved as a string, which you know for the purpose of QGIS works just fine. But in Tile Mill, it needs to recognize that it is in fact a number. So in order to change this, first you identify the field that you want to be uh, you know, numeric. So for here we have weight. Uh, then you just simply toggle your editing and you uh, go to your field calculator. And from here you can make your conversion quite easily. First you, you know, create an output field name and so we'll just, for its purposes, call it to int two. Uh, and then you go to your conversion and then to your um, fields of value. So for here, we're going to want to put our weight. Click OK. And we have this um, now converted into uh, an integer rather than a string. Um, so converting your strings to integers, rendering out your um, raster, setting everything to WGS84. Once you've done all that, it should be pretty much ready to go to bring in the tile mill.